After you play a lot of games from the same designer, you will often notice certain characteristics of those games being repeated from one to the next. It's not surprising that you would see this because if you look at any creative individual, whether they're an author, or a musician, or an actor, you will discover that they often explore the same themes or motifs or style of creation or a setting or something across multiple works. They create something and then they iterate and they explore and they do something again and again, just sort of working out different possibilities for whatever that thing is that interests them. Funny thing is, a lot of publishers also have a similar set of DNA that runs through all of their works, even though the games are often released from different designers. And that is a testament to the strength of the developers who are employed by these publishers because they take whatever comes in, the prototypes that, you know, maybe you see something that like, this could be one of our games, and then they develop it to form it into a perfect example of the company. It's interesting to see this, especially with German publisher Hans and Gluck, which best known for Carcassonne, which has sold X million copies over all these years. But, you know, that was 20 years ago almost. And Hans and Gluck has released a lot of titles since then. And what's funny though, is you see a lot of the same sort of design style, design pattern, the, the way the games play over time, over all these multiple releases. Uh, I've got lots of examples from my shelves. Uh, we're on a Knizia's Tower of Babel, of course, one of my favorites. Just came on a Knizia kick recently. Oregon, Agizia, coming back in a new edition. So many games. Darn in Taxes, Royal Palace, not remembered, but still one of theirs. Goa, Attica, so good, so good. And what's funny is you start playing these after a while and you can recognize a Hans and Gluck game just because of the feel of it. And so when you pick up a new title from theirs, even though it's from an unknown designer, in this case, your own Vanderstein, has not released a game before, but you see the Hans and Gluck logo on the box and you have a pretty good idea for what you're getting into. So to give a brief overview of Liftoff, it's a two to four player game. It plays in about 30 minutes per player. It will take longer than that the first time you play because there is a lot going on as you're trying to figure out what you're doing. You've got these long-term goals that you get at the start of the game that you can shoot for in addition to intermediate goals as you build up your position within the game and everything sort of snowballs as you progress, which happens in a lot of their games. This is the, the, the DNA style that comes through. The game lasts only eight rounds. It's not that long and yet there's a lot going on and you feel like a huge progression has taken place from the little that you start with to where you end up with. So it's interesting to see that over and over again and Liftoff is an ideal example of that, the Uber Hans and Gluck title. Here are most of the components for Liftoff. You have a shared game board that is mostly used for organization. You have a score track around the periphery of the board and you'll circle this a couple of times probably. My three games, we've ended up between 200 and 270 points. You have first and second level missions that start on the board. You have third and fourth level missions that start on the side. They'll come into play in the second half of the game. You have a cost track to build the International Space Station but mostly you will not concern yourself so much with this board, but with your own individual rocket launch agency. You start with a laboratory at level one, which is appropriate for level one missions. You will start with a cost of five or 500,000 or 5 million or whatever you want to think of the price, $500,000 to launch a rocket that can carry one ton. And at the start of each round, you will get $500,000 in income. Each player has their own supplies and they will keep track of their own records because the cost and the tonnage and the income will vary for each player over the course of the game. You will be acquiring technology that comes in the form of fuel, oxygen, power, and bio food. And you will need these technologies in order to launch missions. So the red, the blue, and the yellow are all sort of of the same type and you acquire them similarly. The green one's a little special. You can see the cost to launch a mission up at the top of the board. Level one is one of any of these, doesn't matter. Level two, two red, and then nothing is available at the start of round two, you add this other cost tracker here. The cost for level two missions increase, 
and then you get the cost for three and four, and of course those are higher. You have to build up to it. You build up to level four mission. You have specialist that you will draft at the start of each round. You have some components that you can add to your spaceship so you can increase the tonnage that you carry with each rocket. It also increases the cost. You can then decrease the cost by adding boosters so that you don't blow all your money just launching rockets into space. Of course, you have a ton of money, a first player marker, and some end game goals that give you some guidance as you're starting to play. But the heart of the game is really going to be about the specialist. Liftoff has a ton of things going on all at once, and yet the heart of the game is very simple. In each round, you're going to start with one specialist. You get dealt two specialists. You have a draft. The active player or first player for the round can choose to do a clockwise or counterclockwise draft. I keep one card, I pass two, I get those two, I keep any of those two, pass one, I get that last one. Now I've got three cards again. Hopefully things that I want for the round. I'm going to play two of those and then I'm going to use the powers on those specialists to drive the rest of the round in which I'm going to draft missions and then hopefully launch rockets to take those missions into space in order to score points. It's all very simple and yet there's a lot of details going on and a lot of things that have to come together in order for you to score points and succeed. And abstractly, this whole design mimics the actual workings of a rocket launching agency, at least as far as I can ascertain from uh, my brief bit of reading that I have done on the topic and what's going on here. There's all these different elements, these thresholds that you have to meet in order to, I guess you, you can think of it as meeting the safety requirements for you to be ready to launch a rocket. If you've launched, watched any sort of launch uh, the space shuttle, when that was still active, going off from Cape Canaveral. There's all these different things that could go wrong. And so everything has to be right across the board. And then you can actually launch. In order to help you do that, you're really going to have to pay attention to the specialist. Here are some of the specialists in play. You are going to use all the cards in a four player game. If you have only three people, you leave out these particular cards. With two people, you leave out this set. So the set of specialists is fixed in every game. And after you play multiple games, you start noticing how many of each type of ability there is. And then that, that becomes super important as you play the game because you might miss out on something because a particular type of specialist has been used up or taken by other players and you can no longer take actions that are critical to your growth. So you need to look ahead and find those specialists as you're playing from round to round. As I said, you are going to have three cards in hand. You do a draft. You will play two of these cards and then you will keep one that you will have in hand at the start of the next round and then you'll get dealt two more at random. So you can keep a specialist that will then carry over an ability and give you a little bit of planning ahead to say, ah, I want to use this special ability here. I want to use this. I want to put this together. I want to increase my rocket. All these things come together. So when you play a specialist and you're going to play two on a round, you may have a one-time instant bonus, such as this case, you've got $300,000 or five points. You get an immediate bonus there. And believe it or not, $300,000 is probably gonna serve you better over the long run because you need money to do almost everything in this game. As you can see by these cards, all these little red starbursts are costs that you have to pay in order to do something such as increasing your laboratory from level one to level two, costs five million, a two to three, three to four, costs lots of money, but you can't launch a level four mission unless you have a level four laboratory. So you'll be looking for these cards. Level four missions weigh four tons. And so you need to increase your rocket with these upgrades to uh, be able to carry more tonnage into space. When you buy those though, that's going to increase the cost in addition to the tonnage. So then you also want these booster rockets that will decrease the cost. Even though they won't give you more tonnage, you can save your money for other things such as buying the technology that you need in order to satisfy the requirements for whatever level mission you're launching. So here you can buy one of the blue, yellow, red for four. Well, that's not great. Here you can buy one for four. Here you can buy two different ones for six, which is better. There's other ones where you can buy one, two, or three of them for two, five, or nine money. So 
The money varies depending on the cost, depending on the card you have available. Green works a little differently. It costs $4 for one. There's another card that lets you buy two, one for four or two for seven. You can invest in the International Space Station and the cost of that is gonna be four to 12, depending on when you buy. And that gives you immediate points, but it also lets you increase your income or get a green card and you'll need green cards in order to launch missions at particular levels and for end game scoring. Some cards just give you money, but this gives you six money, but everyone else gets two money. So, oh, you help them while you're helping yourself, but you might want to do it anyway, just because you'll work out better getting that six money. Similarly, there's cards that reward you for each level one mission you've launched in space, you get two points and one money. Everyone else gets one point for all their level ones, but you're gonna profit more and hopefully you are planning to play this card. In addition to the abilities on the card, there's one or two abilities and you can use both of them or you can use only one or you can use none of them and take two million from the bank, which you will probably do at certain times because you were desperate for money. In addition to those immediate actions, in addition to the actions on the card, you've got these yellow actions in the corner and they are going to affect what you do in the remainder of the round. It's a lot of iconography to absorb at the beginning of a game and it only becomes clear as you're playing the game and you start to look for particular things. You know what you need and you hope you find it when you're pulling the cards and drafting. But you kind of need everything. And it's not clear necessarily what the right order is or whether you're going to get another shot if you pass something on to someone else. So a lot of the gameplay comes from the initial draft, but of course, when you're doing a first game, it's hard to recognize that because you don't know what you're looking for. You just have very vague plans for what you want to do, driven by the end game scoring cards, perhaps, and you just carry on from there. Let's say we've already drafted specialist cards in the first round. You start with 10 money in the game and in turn, each player is going to play one of their cards, carry out its effects if they want. In this case, I'll spend four to buy a red fuel technology so that now I can launch level one rockets. I could invest in the space station, but that would cost almost all of my money and I'll have no money left to launch a rocket, which costs five at the moment. So I skip the second action. I turn over this card. I don't want to take any of these actions because I won't have any money to launch a rocket. But if I don't take any actions, I'll get two money from the bank to invest in something later. After everyone has played their cards, you're now going to draft missions. And normally, if you look on the player board here, on a turn, you are going to choose one of the mission stacks. You draw three of them and then you keep one of them. And when you keep them, you place them down on Earth. So I turn over three missions and I'm going to keep one of them. There are seven different level one missions and they all have different effects. You can do each mission only once unless it has a special max two or max three, which happens only in the level three and four missions. Those are mostly for end game bonus scoring. So each of these cards provides a different ability. In this case, it can upgrade the laboratory from whatever my current level is to the next one, or I get a free booster for my rocket, which is going to decrease the cost for future rockets, or I can hand in a technology card and get the other two technology cards. So I can trade in a red and get a yellow and blue which is sort of like getting four free money. You get points for each mission, but only when you launch that mission into space. If you look at my cards that I played, where it's plus one, plus one, I can actually draw five missions on a turn and keep three of them. So I can plan ahead a bit more for the future. Well, this one's a duplicate. You can keep each thing only once, so I can't keep that one, but let's say I'll keep these three. I put them down, I discard the rest. Now it's time to launch. Well, I have a rocket that costs five to launch. I've got five, I need a red, blue, or yellow technology on a level one mission. I've got red. It can take one ton, so I can launch only one of these. What do I want to do? Hmm, let's just give me more money right now. I'm gonna spend five to launch it. This mission will go into space, so I just elevate it to the, uh, upper part of my table above everything else. And I score points for the mission and I score points as well based on whatever my current laboratory level is, as well as what phase we're in. 
Phase one is rounds one to four. Phase two is rounds five to eight. You earn more points when you launch things in phase one, but of course that costs money and sort of sets you back. You can't develop everything if you're spending money launching stuff into space. Well, I launch this mission, I get four million, I get three points plus four points, seven points, and here I am, seven money, I got this in space, that's it. These are just sitting down here waiting for me to launch in the future, but in order to do that, I'm going to either increase my tonnage or I need to launch lots of rockets. And that's when the other specialist powers come into play. If I had not played this card, maybe I played my other specialist card instead. One that gives me points for all the level one missions that I have, but I have none, so I would skip that and I'd still get the $2 million. But now I can launch an additional ton into space. So in addition to the one ton, that is my my minimum, my, my set level, this turn only, I can launch a rocket that has one additional ton on it. I could only draw four missions and keep two of them, but if I had done that, I could have put both these missions on the same rocket, launch it into space, I would have increased the level of my laboratory, in addition to getting four money, in addition to getting five points here, and the points for launching a rocket with a level one laboratory. So four, three, two, nine points. And now I'm upgraded. Now I have the money. Oh, this seems like a better combination. Is it? It could be. Instead of launching an additional tonnage, I could have drafted this one, which lets you launch a second rocket on a turn. So you can always launch one rocket with your laboratory here. If you draft one of these cards, now I can launch a second rocket. And this rocket that I launch will cost two less than whatever my cost is here. I could choose to just launch one rocket for three and ignore this one completely. So I will save money in addition to getting the four here, in addition to having other things left over for later. Oh, instead of all that, well, hmm, I could have a plus two tonnage, but I don't even, ha I can't, if I get the plus two tonnage, I can only draft four cards and keep two of them, which means it's only two tons anyway, so I can't even use this. And I'm throwing this away without using these upgrade abilities. Ah, there we go. In a small space is sort of the constrictions and the restraints and the options that are going to be available to you on each turn as you're trying to decide what to draft and then what to play. Do I want to draft additional missions this turn and to plan for the future? Any missions you don't launch in the space just sit down on Earth waiting for you. You don't get their points, you don't get their abilities, but you know they're there and you can plan when you want to launch certain things in order to get the maximum benefit out of them. Perhaps you can increase your tonnage in the future and then you can start drawing from the level two missions and launch a level two and a one together as long as you can bring three tons into space. Maybe you're gonna draft additional rockets because each rocket you launch is gonna give you victory points, which is separate from each mission that you launch. And that's one of the complicating elements of the game that's a little difficult to wrap your head around at first. You have a set of guidelines that says it costs five to launch a rocket, a rocket can carry one ton. You have one rocket launch capability in your laboratory. That rocket can carry any number of missions up to the maximum weight, which initially is only one. So to begin with, it's very easy. I have a rocket that can carry one level one mission that, that weighs one ton. But if I increase my tonnage to two, I can take a level two mission that weighs two tons and level three is three tons, four is four tons. It's all very predictable as you might expect, helps for planning but I can carry one level two mission that's two tons or two level one missions that are one ton each. If I have a second rocket, well, that weight restriction also applies to the rocket. That cost applies to the rocket, except that each additional rocket that you have on a specialist card is gonna give a two cost discount. So you're putting together how many rockets that carry how much weight to take which missions in the space to give which bonuses at which time you're trying to put all this together with the additional complication that you need to have a laboratory that's a level at least as high at the, as the mission you're going to launch. And you need the technology cards 
that satisfy the level of the mission that you're going to launch. So there's all these things you're trying to progress roughly at the same time. They all seem critically important, but you're not going to be able to do it all. It's just, it's impossible to do because you're playing only two specialist cards on a turn. You're probably going to launch only one or two missions on the first turn. It's going to give you a little benefit, but then the mission that you get is going to help propel you in the future. It's going to give you a booster, so you're going to save money, or it's going to advance your, your laboratory to a different level, so now I don't have to take a specialist card that lets me do that. Or I just to get to jump to level three much faster, which is good because you get more points each level that you jump up. And I'm planning for the future. Level three missions, level four missions come into play in phase two with round five. I feel like I'm throwing a million things at you. And this is the feeling of liftoff where it's all these components coming together and you get these little bits and pieces that you're trying to grab and then paste together some sort of plan on the fly while you're on the rocket as it's going in the space. If you want to think of it that way, you have to make plans for what you're going to do in the future when your rocket reaches that point. It's, a lot of things moving at once. And it's a little bit hard initially to plan towards the end of the game because you start with a very limited amount of information as to what you're trying to do. Here's a sampling of the end game scoring cards. You get three of these cards at the beginning of the game and you draft them similar to specialist cards and they give you goals, things you're trying to do over the course of the game. They give you some direction as to what you're trying to collect or accomplish. So in the case up here, if you collect three red cards and you have those three fuel cards on your space station or your rocket agency at the end of the game, you'll get a bonus of four points, which isn't much. But if you get six or more cards, 25 points. You don't need six of those cards during the game, but if you can collect them, you get a huge bonus. Similar with each of the other cards, the green ones don't give you much of a bonus, but that's because each green card itself is worth three points. That's why the greens function a little differently from the red, yellow, and blue. If you get a set, that's worth points. If you upgrade your ship, those are worth points. If you upgrade your ship enough, and then you have mission cards. If I complete four level one missions, and this is what this iconography here is, is here with the arrow showing that these are missions that are up in space and not the ones on Earth. If I've launched four of them, I get three points. Big deal. But if I do six, and that's six out of the seven, 20 points. Here, I combine how many level one and level four missions I've launched as long as I've launched at least one level four, and I can get 10 or 20 points as long as I've launched enough of those. So over here, this is how many rockets, how many parts I've invested invested in the International Space Station. So if I've invested twice, placed two of my rockets there, I've earned points during the game for doing that investment, but I get an end game bonus as well if I have this particular card. So these are the end game cards that you, you have. You can also see more of those cards come into play as you complete certain mission cards level two mission well every red card is worth two points that's not much but of course if you have the end game card where each red is also worth five points great now you've got a goal specialize in these you get bonus points uh, based on how many upgrades you've made or what your income level is or collecting yellow green or blue cards you can compound the missions with the in-game scoring. In this case, each rocket you have on the International Space Station is worth seven points. Well, combine it with this one and you've got a lot. So you see the in-game cards at the beginning of the game. And as you play and you learn what all these mission cards are, you start digging to find the things that are going to combo together to score you the most points. Uh, other mission cards here, this just gives you one to four points for each level one to four mission card you've completed. So sort of double up the value of a card. This one here, you can collect up to three of these. It's worth 15 points on its own. If you get two of them, they're worth 25 points each. If you get three of them, then they're worth 35 points each. So suddenly you've gone from 15 points for this one card to 105 points for three cards. 
but good luck trying to get all three of these because of course other people will probably snatch them away. The end game goals that you start with and the ones that you acquire over the course of the game are, are where a lot of the points come from. So you may end the game and you'll have 100, 150 points, something like that. And then suddenly you'll add on another 100 something points for the end game scoring missions, for all the cards within Hourglass because they score points only at the end of the game based on whatever conditions you've met. You additionally score points for your green technology cards, the bio fuel, bio food, which is three points each. You get a point for every five money left, but whatever. That's just like icing on the cake. Uh, the, with the, almost all the points coming from other things. It's this huge outpouring of points as long as you actually get stuff done. And again, that comes into the big challenge of the game. That first time that you play Liftoff, it's it's going to be rough, probably. You're going to have a hard time putting everything together. You don't know what you're doing unless you've looked through all the mission cards in the game and you've somehow magically you know, congealed them all in your head with some sort of path for how you're going to advance through the levels, through the missions, put everything together to score points. It's probably not going to happen, but, you know, maybe? No, probably not. It's very difficult to see what you're trying to do. And so you have those end game scoring cards to guide you. The game has a little interesting out in that when you transition from the first phase to the second phase, so after the first four rounds to the next four rounds, where you add the level and three, uh, three and four mission cards, where you change the cost of the level two cards. So there's a little tr transition point there. In addition, you can sell any end game card that you want to for five money which is nothing which is it's so funny to think like five money versus i can get 20 points for this card and yet often you're just you've abandoned something it's hard to do all three end game scoring cards just because there's often not a lot of overlap on them or if i'm trying to co collect both red and blue technology well i'm using the same actions to collect red or blue and it it's worth more points to maximize something than to get a little bit on two of them. So maybe you just ditch a card anyway, and that five money can come into valuable, oh, oh, it can, it can serve you so well at a certain point where you are just desperate for money. Because every single round, as you're, you're looking at the specialist cards that you can draft, and you're trying to plan ahead for the turn. Well, I definitely need to advance my laboratory so I can do a level three mission because it's going to give me this thing. It'll give me a free investment in the space station, which then I can use to get a green card, which I'll need to do this, you know, as you're trying to put this all together. So I'm going to keep this specialist, but then I need seven money to go from a level two to level three. And if I spend all that money, I won't have, oh, oh, I won't have enough. And so you're looking at all these things and trying to put them all together. And it's a little puzzle individually and you're sort of just doing it all on your own. The box has a 30 minute per player playing time and there's little in the way of you interacting with other people directly. You're not stealing things from them, but there's definitely points where you're, you're squeezing people. I saw that in my first game with four players where one player kept drafting the things that the person downstream from them needed. And so the other person just never got what he wanted. Ah, oh, he, he was he was very upset. But that's one way that you you put the squeeze on someone and you force them to develop a different way. But of course, in a first time game, you're not going to know what those other ways are. There's a race for the International Space Station because the cost escalates. It's four, five, and six, six, seven, uh, and you fill some of those spots in a three and two player game just to you know make the competition sort of balance out. It's that the extra dollar is important over and over and over again as you're trying to do things. And so the turn order matters in terms of who's going to jump into the space station to get you a bonus. You want to jump in earlier when it's cheaper, but you also want to jump in later because you get five points and one point for each mission you've already launched in the space. So if you're able to invest late in the game and there's a level mission level three mission card that lets you invest for no money immediately. That's great. If you're able to invest late, then you get 
tons of points. You may get 12 or more points off of that one investment, which is way more than you're going to get from a mission card. So there's all these things that you're trying to weigh what's important to do. So competition for drafting specialists, competition for the International Space Station, and then competition for certain mission cards as well. The mission decks scale based on the player count. So there are seven different level one, seven different level two, I think five different level three, five different level four, and you can get duplicates of some of the level three and one of the level four. But there's not enough level four to get all that you want. The one where if you get three of them, it's worth 35 points each. And of course, great, I want to get them all. But you have to be able to draft all of those cards at once and hope that other people don't take them away from you. And if you're focused on playing specialist cards that let you draft lots of things, well, then you're giving up the ability to launch additional rockets or put additional tonnage on a rocket or get immediate points or money, you're giving things away in order to get something else. So I played three times on a review copy, not a review copy, a copy from the BGG library, which was given to us by Hansom Gluck at, at Spiel 2018. I played three times, twice with two people, once with four people. And in my third game, when I should know better, I got to see just the rails come off completely. My opponent, first time playing, he kept passing up the laboratory advancement cards. One, he thought, oh, I can get this later. Oh, I don't have enough money this round. And I had pocketed one of those, and I kept holding that over from round to round because I knew I needed to advance level four to get up this level four mission in order to get this big in-game scoring. And he just never got to advance past level two. Just failed completely. So he had drafted all these level three and level four missions and he couldn't do anything with them. His points were just bottomed out. I had a similar issue in that I needed cards that would let me launch two rockets at a time. I had lowered, I put lots of boosters on my rocket so the cost was really low, but that's a benefit only if you can launch multiple rockets in a round and you need the specialist cards to do that, which he was taking and I hadn't noticed they had gone by and so I was putting all my hopes on this thing that wasn't going to to come. The specialist cards, as I mentioned, you use a fixed set in the entire game and you're going to see all of them in phase one in the first four rounds of the game and then you shuffle them all up. You each have one left over from round four and then you go through them again. So you know everything that's coming. You know what's available to you, but you don't know when you're going to get it. Are you going to have a round where you get to put together two of those discounted rockets and I can launch three rockets in one round? Maybe, but it's not likely. Depends on what other people do. So you're planning ahead. You've got some general path for advancement that you're trying to put together as you see the different elements of the game. But there's also all these tactical elements that just come up round by round. Oh, which cards am I going to get? I've got this one that I carried over that I know I want to use. What am I going to pair with it? And then what am I going to keep to carry over to the next round to build on from there? So all these little bit by bit moments. And then I have to figure out the cash for everything. And how am I going to make it work? What's more important this round? Advancing my laboratory level? Launching something? Investing in the space station? adding on tonnage. There's all these things just pulling you in multiple directions all over the place. And it's challenging. There's a lot of stuff going on. I'm trying to look for the box here. Make sure I can hold it up at the end. It's a challenge in my room too. There's a ton of things going on. So this is an initial design from your own uh, Vanderstein. And it, it it's ideal I, ideal Hans of Gluck game in that it's providing you this challenge that starts simple. You build on it turn by turn. You've got some look ahead to what the end game is, what you're trying to do, what, what the points are coming from at the end based on what you're holding. And yet, how are you going to get there? How are you going to maneuver through that path that everyone else is also walking in front of you and stopping you from where you want to go? all these things pulling you together at once it's 
a tough, tough game.